start with uh, ourselves. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, my name is Jake Tucker. Uh, I do some poems with my friend David Lodi here. And we have music, and it's, it's fun. Um, so, this one is called. Change of the plan. 
Okay. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were fell, fell down bound into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. She has to have heart surgery. It's scheduled for Wednesday, tomorrow, midway through her spring break. It's her second this year. It's one of a dozen in her life. It's not her knee, not her shoulder, not arthritis. It's her heart. She's a smile, and I wonder where she finds it. Oh, keep smiling. Yeah, yeah. Oh, keep smiling. Yeah, yeah, oh, keep smiling, yeah, 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 yeah. It's bright sun outside, the trees are busting with color, it smells nice, 
and the birds can't shut up. Girls walk by with a bounce in their step, dimples out in full effect. Everyone seems to be smiling everywhere I go. But I don't understand how I could smile. I don't understand how anyone can. When friends have to have heart surgeries twice a year. When everyone is lonely. When moms get cancer. When siblings die in car crashes. When kids in Africa are burnt born with AIDS. When there are earthquakes, tsunamis, and nuclear meltdowns. When millions of people will never know anything besides poverty. I don't know how to smile. When the weight of all this hurt presses down, I feel the in un imbalance in my gut. I can't see the scales as being even. The cherry blossoms and sunshine can't outweigh cancer and poverty. I feel like if I were to, to smile, I would have to trick myself. And those few who smile honest, the ones who seem to come as close as humanly possible to being a good person, these people don't get a free pass. They seem to suffer more for their good hearts. When I see them smile with honesty in their eyes, I can't help but wonder if they're blind or dumb. I feel dumb when I smile, or at least I do today. But when I think of my friend going in for heart surgery, I hope she never feels dumb when she smiles. This one is about Everett, which is where I was born and I grew up on the outskirts of it. There used to be a douchey little club near the hockey arena, the Whammy Bar. The owner was a cousin of my friend Isaac. This was more than enough connection to get me to check it out. Isaac and I went on a weekday, paid full price, and played Pac-Man. The place filled up with 30-something women in short skirts and porn star heels flirting with greasy-haired muscles in half-buttoned dress shirts. We heard multiple Nelly songs. Isaac came close to his all-time high score more than once. We were on our last quarter when a couple of greasy-haired muscles started shouting. Pretty soon, the shouts turned to swings. Then the, the tussle spilt my beer. It's always the innocent that get hurt most in these types of situations. I think the bouncer sensed of that. Uh, be I think the bouncer sensed that a beverage was in danger because he came running. He parted the crowd like the, uh, the Red Sea. The man had a face tattoo, which I assume meant he did not take shit. Most people tend to get out of the way of big men with face tattoos. He grabbed one guy by the collar and the other guy by the head and dragged them out of the bar. It's the little things that I miss most about my hometown. <laughs> um, all right. I'll read this. This one's about Vancouver. I live in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. This is called Good Morning Vancouver. I caught the 804 to downtown. The early service started at 9 o'clock. I shared the back with, liquor scented, uh, with a liquor-scented man in sunglasses who muttered to himself, cleared his throat, and scowled. At Maple Street, a pack of young women filled the bus with the smell of shampoo and coffee. Over the Granville Bridge, the sun broke the overcast shining in beams on a half dozen identical condo buildings and the evergreens in Stanley Park. Even the half-drunk grinned. Between Drake and Davy, the city was waking. Signs for diners and porn stores show, shown open. So that's that. Um, I'll read two more again. There. This one's about coyotes. I like coyotes a lot. <laughs> A pack of handsome coyotes met just after dusk under a fallen fir near the edge of the arboretum to discuss why you never called back and what this could mean. They cleaned their bushy, bushy tails, asked each other for assurance that their tails were attractive. Why didn't you call back? 
It was probably that thing they said last Saturday about women's basketball. <laughs> they were just trying to be funny and they were nervous. <laughs> but they do respect women's athletics. Together they let a muffled howl drift over the horizon, hoping you'd hear it and recognize it as an apology. They meant no offense. The, dis the distraught canines wondered, what more could they do? A poem? Feats of strength? Maybe if they lost a few pounds or ate your ex-boyfriend's cat? <laughs> they sat with these questions, occasionally letting a melancholic whimper escape from under their breath. The tree's countenance became downcast as they eavesdropped around the perimeter of the coyote moot. Coyote, coyotes can reach levels of lonesomeness unimagined by the rest of the animal uh, kingdom. The tallest one stumbled on a conclusion he found, he found convincing. They must wear ties. No woman has ever ignored a coyote wearing a tie. Uh, oh, this will be my last one. This one is for Ryan Johnson. <laughs> the clouds hung low on glaciated peaks crumbling into deep valleys. The sun came through in patches. It was all very pleasant for the most part. But I was told there would be mountain goats. Lots of them. Hanging from every precipice, dancing precarious, precarious, bleeding anthems from every cliff in this park. I had driven a long way, with steep drop-offs, narrow lanes, and no guardrails. My stomach had turned quick queasy. I had swallowed my fear and needed no breath mint. But I was promised mountain goats. There are no mountain goats at this visitor center. Only stuffed marmots, an exhibit about global warming, and ugly children throwing snow. <laughs> Take 10 and then Elise.